Hey, it's Neville, and let me take you on a quick tour of my home office and podcast studio. Come on in. So this is it. As you can see, take a look around. This is the whole thing. This is a, just a regular bedroom inside of a house, and I turned it into a full workspace where I can actually work. I can have someone else work. I have a couple other people work. Also, all the desks are fully adjustable because I like sit-standing desks. But also, the kicker here that I feel like I've like kind of found a good balance of is that I can work from here, but also do a whole podcast setup over here. Now, not only is this podcast with audio, but this is all video. If you notice, there's a camera right there, there's a camera right here, and there's a camera right here. And check out the screen for a second and watch, here's the cool thing. A lot of times you have to film all three separate cameras and then edit it later, but check out what we did. You push a button over here and you can switch through all the different things. So check this out. This is camera one over here and look at what it's pointing at over there. I sit down here, hey, look at that professional shot. Look how good that looks. Hey, how's it going? But look at me over here now. So this is what it actually looks like over here. Or I can sit in the guest spot, same thing. And so I will have a producer come run this while we're doing the show. And then at the end, the whole thing's edited and ready to go. Isn't that cool? The audio is mixed in, the video is mixed in. Also, I actually work at this area. So let's get into the equipment that's needed. Now, this isn't exactly the easiest thing to set up. You do need like a decent sized room, but mainly you need three cameras, a switcher board, a computer, and two mics, that's it. So depending on how high end you wanna go, the, the sky's the limit with your budget, but you could do this all for probably around $3,000, but I probably did it for around $6,000. So the number one thing you're gonna need is cameras. So these are all Sony A6400s. These are reasonably cheap cameras and this lens that they come with is just good to go out of the box. You don't need any super fancy lenses or anything like that. That's why I really like the A6400. It's a DSLR, so you don't even have to know what that means. I honestly don't know what DSLR stands for. I don't know what these lens numbers means, F50, I have no idea. I just know that they look good. They each have a power cord running to it and an HDMI cable running directly into the switcher. Now here's the next big piece. And this is honestly something that I kind of found out myself and was very difficult to find. I wanted to start a podcast kind of like Joe Rogan had where it's just live edited on the spot. And I went with all these consumer grade switcher boards and actually returned them all because I thought they were garbage, they had too many lights, too many buttons, too many settings, everything. This, my friends, is what's known as a Roland AV mixer. And basically what this is actually made for is very small video and audio productions, like a small band playing at like a small, you know, 50 person club or for churches. That's actually how I found this. I, I YouTube how they live stream church stuff. So it basically has three inputs for video and three inputs for audio. And so you could, these link to the cameras and these two right here are those microphone inputs and that's it. And you just select whichever one you want and it changes to it and then it records that exact thing. Let me show you a quick example of what I mean. All right, here's a quick example of what I'm talking about. I can hit record over here. So now I'm recording on the video switcher and I can switch, switch over to Sam doing some of the, the filming over there. I switch over to the guest, which, hey, here's the guest. I can uh, switch back over to me. And as soon as I hit stop on this, watch what happens. You can see that now I have a fully edited clip of what I just recorded. Switch, switch over to Sam doing some of the filming over there. Switch over to the guest, which, hey, here's the guest. I can uh, switch back over to me. So I have a fully edited video already. There's no editing, there's no nothing. And so that's the benefit of having one of these Roland switcher boards. And I think this is the perfect size for a small studio like this. If I was gonna do more cameras or have like more guests or something like that, I would go with something that has like four to eight inputs and the sky's the limit on how many inputs you can have. But this is how a lot of podcasts like Joe Rogan, some of the more professional ones do it with one of these switcher boards. That's kind of the trick. All right, the next pieces of equipment are of course the mics. These are Shure SMB70s. These are, I call them the Joe Rogan mics cause like I think Joe Rogan popularized this and now every single person has them. And honestly, I see why he uses them. They're amazing. You literally, so long as this thing is roughly pointed towards your mouth, um, it'll pick up. It, it, it's fantastic. You don't really need to like hold it really close, really far. It kind of doesn't matter. So long as you're like within this general vicinity of it pointing at you, 
it's good. The other thing is these mic arms. Uh, I really, really like the mic arms. I also have some of these other little mic stands like this. I'm obviously using this for a camera over here. But the problem is you gotta kinda like lean towards and sit like this. And so I've had these before and you're like leaning towards and imagine both guests are leaning here. This is the biggest table in the world. You're basically kissing. And so I like being able to like lean back, kinda pull this thing to wherever my face goes. So I can be over here, 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 taller, shorter, doesn't really matter. These little podcast arms, they cost about a hundred bucks. They work fantastic. And here's the greatest thing. They just pop out, bam, pop it out. So whenever I use my normal camera over there for video, I actually just take this mic and I stick it over there into that little socket. Check this out. So put that there, bam. Now, this is my regular recording mic that I use for when I'm working at my computer. Pretty simple. So another piece of equipment that you might want is this good old guy, it's a teleprompter. So there's actually a camera right behind there. And this is a, a nice one that I can use my iPad Pro with. So it has big words on it. So if you notice on the teleprompter app, it looks like gobbledygook, right? But if you put it in here, check that out. See if we can get a shot of this. You can actually read off the words of what you're saying. So if you have a nice little script or something that you like, and you're not so good at coming up with stuff on the fly, then a teleprompter would be a great way to sit here and you can just read off of it. So I can sit here, read off of it, and I'm looking straight at the camera and talking, and it kind of looks like I know what I'm saying. So that's a cool little thing that you can get if you want. So then let's talk about furniture next, because that's a big consideration. It's gonna just very, really vary on the size of your room. So first of all, here is where I am 90% of the time. Maybe 98% of the time, I'm just sitting in this Amazon $50 chair. Um, I kind of don't really care about chairs too much. I think this feels great and it's fine, but I did put rollerblade wheels on them. I will highly recommend putting rollerblade wheels. I'll link the ones I put on Amazon. These go in any standard chair socket. Um, so if you notice, this one has like those cheap little plastic ones, but here's the problem. If you're on a rug and you have these little things, these things are really sharp on the edges. They rip up your rug and they get stuck. And so if you have these rollerblade wheels, you can just roll around even on a thick plush rug really well and it won't rip up your rugs. Also, it just makes things cool. And if you really want to get on the concrete and roll down the hallway really fast on this thing, you totally can. So if you notice over here, I actually have double desks. This is not just one desk. These are actually two Amazon desks I bought for pretty cheap. And then they both have LEDs that uh, will move them to different uh, lengths. So this could go up while that one stays down, all that kind of stuff. So sit, stand desks all around. Pro tip, and I learned this the hard way. I ordered this really fancy $3,000 desk and it took forever to come. But what they did was they sent me the legs ahead of time. Those came in like two days. And so I had this desk laying around and it had the standable legs I was like, wait, what if I just bolt this desk that I already like onto those legs? Sure enough, it worked great. That's exactly what both of these are. I did not buy these as a standing desk set. I just bought the legs for two or 300 bucks off Amazon. You slap them on to whatever desk you like. There you go, sit, stand desk. It's amazing. I personally like having drawers in my desk. I use them all the time. And it just bugs me to no end that no desks that are sit, stand come with drawers, very few. So this is the perfect solution. Also, the sit-stand desks are super expensive. This is a $200 desk. Those are $200 set of legs. Perfect sit-stand for 400 bucks. How cool is that? Here's another piece of furniture you need. If you're gonna do the podcast interview station, you're gonna need a table. Now, get a wide shot of this and show like the, the weird angling of this table. So a lot of people are like, is, is this kind of strange? Like, why is it in a corner like this? I've gone through every variation in history, known to man, of where to put this damn table. I try putting it in the corner, because obviously that makes the most sense. But then what happens is one person gets really squished in, one person's over there, and then on camera, it doesn't look very good. You have to have a little depth on the camera. Every videographer will tell you, you can't just be right up against a wall like this, you wanna be further away. In fact, let's try that right now. Get me right up against this wall. Okay, so that's one thing. It looks like we're filming a hostage video over here. Versus if you go all the way back and I'm standing here, just having a little bit of depth makes everything a little bit more interesting. It makes it a little more blurry in the background. It just adds some flavor to the video. So you don't wanna be right up against a wall if you can avoid it. So that's why this desk is here. And this is actually a round desk and I took off the leafs. If you notice, it has these little uh, things over here. 
therefore, uh, therefore leaves that fold up, I took those off. The other thing you have to remember is that when you sit, you have legs and your legs gotta go somewhere. So some of these weird mid-century modern tables have this, these legs that go in and then out. And you kind of bump into them. You gotta, you gotta just watch out for that. So I selected the smallest desk I could find. This is a round table. I took off the leaves. So this is just about like barely even two feet across. It's very, very small. And that was something I had to do just by the nature of the room and not having like a gigantic studio. The other thing you want to do is uh, pepper the place with uh, little trinkets and stuff. So as you can see, I got some plants back here. Hint, all the plants in this place are fake except the one and I always forget to water it. So I like fake plants. Most people hate them. There's another plant right there in the middle. The other thing I got is this cool bookshelf from Article. So I think it looks great, it functions great, it's super sturdy. It costs between like five and six or $700, somewhere in that range with shipping. And I love it. Um, I'm not very good at picking up furniture. So I was very happy when this came out the way it did. And I just think it looks fantastic in the videos. As you can see, it looks really great. It just adds a bit of flair. It just looks cool all around. Let's take a look at the other side of the room. This is not fully done. I actually have a couch coming right here that's about seven feet long. This will be a reading area and these pictures will be hung over it. And that will also reduce some of the echo. So let's talk about echo for a second. This is a concrete floor room with just basic flat white walls. It was Echo City. I could be like, hello, hello. And it was like being in the Grand Canyon. There's so much echo in this room. I was like, this is gonna be a tough one. So let's take a look at the walls over here. If you notice, check this out. It's actually dead grass weaved into the wallpaper. It's called grass cloth. So grass cloth is usually this type of, uh, type of thing. You're supposed to have these seams here. That's part of the appeal, supposedly. And these rolls cost about 70 bucks a piece, uh, between 20 and 70 bucks a piece on Amazon. I'll link the ones that I have. But the cool thing about grass cloth is because it has texture, I can put this up on the wall and it actually absorbs a lot of sound. So when I first moved in here with the drywall over here, it just made so much echo and just putting this up reduced a ton of the echo, but not all of it. Just remember the, the ceiling is also flat and this bottom is concrete. So you gotta cover up as much of this as you can and one of the things I did was I bought a rug. Now, I actually have another rug that I'm probably gonna replace this with because it's more shaggy. The shaggier the rug, the better the sound dampening. This is an outdoor rug. And I did that so I could roll on the, the chairs with it easier. But I actually recommend an indoor rug that's a little bit shaggy so it absorbs a lot of the sound. And when I have the couch over there, it'll also absorb a whole bunch more sound. The other thing you can do is put up acoustic panels. I haven't done that, but I'm eventually gonna put some up over there. Also. Here's a cool little sound trick that costs pretty much no money. So if you have just a little throw blanket or something that you don't mind getting dirty, uh, you can take this and you just put it on the ground. So a lot of times on the podcast, it looks nice when we're interviewing the guests, but behind the scenes, we've got, we've got this stuff kind of down there like this. And it just absorbs a little bit more of the sound. So if you can't you know, rug your whole place or carpet it, this is also an option. Another important thing to consider is Lighting, yeah. See these little torch here lamps? These have been on all day. I could touch them. They give off almost no heat. These are LED lamps I bought on Amazon. In fact, I have one, two, three, four surrounding the place. So those are the lights that I use to make it bright. And I actually use all these little Philips Hue products. So for example, check this out and watch what happens in the room. I'm gonna click it, boop, they all go off. So I can control them all from this little guy and then boop, Turn them all on again, they all go on. So I use a bunch of these little Philips Hue things throughout the room. In fact, the main lighting in this room, so if I turn off these big ones, you'll notice is those. These are Philips play lights and they make nice little accent lights. And actually, when I'm working in this room and not doing a podcast, I actually don't turn on all those big lights. I think they're too bright sometimes. So I just use those cool Philips Hue lights. They can change colors, they can do all sorts of things. So you don't always need a ton of different light setups. It depends how much natural light you have, all that kind of stuff. But I have a couple of these little things. So for example, this is a Relano light panel and it goes from bright to soft and you can change the warmness and brightness of it, all sorts of little things. And it's portable, this is all just battery operated, which is really cool. So you don't need to have a plug. So let's say I don't have enough light on my face right now. I could, bam, more light and I can change thing, all sorts of stuff. It's really cool. I also have really, really enjoyed these. 
These are those, uh, little Amaran portable lights. They got a little battery on here that I can rechargeable. So just take that out, bam, put that in. And these things are crazy bright. Whoa, look at that. So, I mean, you can go really bright, really soft. So let's say this is not lit up well enough for a guest. I could just kind of bam, just get tons of light. Oh, there's a shadow. Well, guess what? I can move it. I can set it down over here, do all sorts of kind of stuff. These are really just handy to have. And these probably cost about 50 bucks or less on Amazon. I'll link them in the description below. It's pretty cool. I recommend having them at all times. I use them for Zoom calls whenever I travel. So I'm gonna travel hosting one of our office hours. I wanna make it look kind of nice. And so I'll actually put one of these against a wall. So let's say I'm working out of a hotel, put it up against the wall and it reflects nice soft white light. So it lights up my face without being so harsh like this. Cool, so I hope you enjoyed that quick tour of my home office slash podcast video studio. This is everything you need to know on how to make a three camera podcast setup and a workspace. So you just take one of your rooms in your house or apartment, a condo, and turn it into something really cool. And whenever it's not in use, bam, close it up, you're done. My name is Nelvador. I'll talk to you later.